Okay, we're recording. So uh, just to introduce myself again, my name is Eric Johnson. I'm the creator and CEO of TeamZ. And um, I'm really excited to be with you guys today. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take you guys through, well, I'm going to show you TeamZ, which is an unbelievable um, CRM with, it, with an included power hour software to help network marketers build their business. And we have a specific version that we've now built for Mascara Beauty, which I'm going to show you guys, um, which is going to save you a ton of time every day. And it's going to help you focus on what's important, which is building relationships. Before I get in and show you guys how to do that, I'm, I'll show you how to set it up. I'll show you how to crush a power hour, which by that I mean connect with more than 20 people a day in less than 30 minutes. What? Yeah. Before I show you guys that though, first I need to take you through some training on relationship marketing, which is the philosophy Teams is built on. And it's a little bit different than what is typically taught in network marketing because it focuses on the relationship first. Now the cool thing is, is a lot of people are turned off by this business because they feel like they're going to damage relationships. Maybe they already have. Um, people are skeptical because other people that they trusted had violated that trust by coming after them with the business opportunity too quickly. Things like that have happened. A lot of people are uncomfortable with it. I'm going to show you guys how you can build this, this business based on relationships so everybody's delighted to hear from you. So rejection's not an issue and no's are not an issue. It's just a matter of when people are ready for an invite. So I'm going to show you guys all of that. First, I'm going to show you some of the philosophy, then I'll take you into the system that automates it and makes it so easy for you. Okay. All okay. right. Where's my presentation? Here it is. Boom. Let's do this quickly. And it is going to feel like you guys are literally drinking water through a fire hose. I'm going to give you a ton of information. So make sure you have your pads and paper ready. Here's what I want to talk to you first about how to leverage relationship marketing to become a power hour boss. Okay. How to leverage relationship marketing to become a power hour boss. My backstory is this. I've been in the business of helping people build their business for 16 years. This has been my whole grown up life is helping people build their business, teaching them the principles, some of, some of which I'll teach you today and helping them create systems so that they can do it consistently. Okay. So I'm going to teach you guys how to do it and then I'll show you the system we built for you. Um, I got into network marketing accidentally, just like a lot of people did. I found a product line that really helped me. I mean, my example, at one time I was a Beachbody coach. I lost 60 pounds doing the Beachbody thing, and it was life-changing. People were, were asking me what I was doing. They thought I looked great and healthy, and I was excited to share it. And I kind of fell into network marketing by accident just because I was already sharing it. You know what I mean? And I know some of you guys can relate to that. And as somebody who taught people how to build business, I knew that if I wanted to be successful in this business, that I needed to leverage my time. I needed to find a way to do this in an hour a day because I'm busy, right? Are you guys, hello, are you guys busy? <laughs> Absolutely, right? So I started looking for tools. Now, what, if you came to me as a, as a client to help me build your business, first thing I would ask you is what are the tools available to you to help you leverage your time? And we started looking and looking and looking. We, I couldn't find anything. Honestly, the few things that existed for our industry were horrible. They were so complicated and hard to use. I'm not a tech person. It has to be super easy. And nothing was based on relationships. Everything was based on this whole, got it back, in my opinion, got it backwards, go for no, old school, pound your list philosophy, which I don't believe is that effective. So we had to build it ourselves. That's kind of the story how Teamsy was built. Now, just to give you guys some background, in just, um, just over two years, we turned two in December. We've had more than 50,000 network marketers use Teamsy. So I'm excited that you guys are the first Mascara Beauty team to be looking at Teamsy for your network. So excited for, to have it for you guys. We're in more than 50 networks now. And um, over those two years, just so you guys know, our average people who are actively using Teamsy, they've been averaging 21 new customers and nine recruits over 90 days. That's kind of like the average progress, which is pretty cool. And I'll show you, that's less than an hour a day of work. Okay, where did my presentation go? Here we go. So what is relationship marketing? Let's just talk about this a little bit. You may have heard this term and a lot of people think it's like, oh, it's like just means marketing to your relationships. No, that's not what it is. It's not marketing to your relationships. Relationship marketing is actually marketing by relationship. It's about building relationships, right? But first off, I want you guys to get this. It's a lead generation system. Come on, slides. Apple, where's my slide? That's so weird. I'm pushing the buttons, guys. I can see a, I can see a slide that says, what is relationship marketing? Yeah, but it's supposed to be giving me my bullets. Oh. There we go. <laughs> yes. 
<laughs> Relationship marketing is a lead generation system. This is the point I wanted you guys to get. It's a lead generation system. That's a system that initiates consumer interest or inquiry into the products or services of a business. You need to have a mindset shift even at the beginning of our conversation that, you know, cosmetics, beauty products, this is not your business. Your business is generating new leads. You are in the lead generation business. And I'm going to have a heck of a time with my slides not showing me my thing. So maybe it's just this slide. You're in the lead generation business, okay? What that means is no matter how busy you are in your business today, if you're not doing the activities that generate new business, new leads, then you're not building your business today. Okay, and it's a mindset shift every one of us needs to make. And that's why it's so important to have a little block of time each day where you're being proactive about generating new business. Okay, now I'm gonna see if I can, if I can get it to work on the next slide. It's so funny, you guys know that I've presented this particular slideshow 100 times. All right, we're just gonna go with this way. Next principle, developing and deepening relationships is your paramount duty as a business owner. Okay, developing and deepening relationships is your paramount duty as a business owner, okay? In other words, we meet people, we generate new leads so that we can develop and deepen relationships with them. That, in a nutshell, is how a business is built, okay? Now, what we do with those relationships is we turn them into advocates by investing time and providing outstanding service, okay? We turn them into advocates by investing time and providing outstanding service. In other words, you hear people in this business say things like, oh, I've gone through my warm market, now what? With relationship marketing, there's no such thing as going through your warm market. You are constantly communicating with your warm market and making them warmer. Over time, people either join your team, they become a customer, or they become your advocate, or a combination of those three. There's really no other option if you're focused on helping people all the time. Okay. Next principle, relationship marketing depends on trust. Relationship marketing depends on trust. In other words, if you're a jerk, this ain't gonna work, okay? And I'm sure that you guys have come across people in your business um, or maybe just in your life that are in this industry that are not trustworthy. Is that true? In fact, as you're approaching people about the opportunity, a lot of people are already skeptical and guarded because they've experienced this. But trust, trust makes the work fun because when people trust you, you don't have to convince them. You can get right to helping them. Also, trucks, tr trucks, trust takes the icky salesperson feeling out of the process. It takes the icky salesperson feeling out of the process. I might have to go get the baby here in a second. And also you get to go for yes with trust. You get to go for yes. Instead of this whole go for no philosophy, which you guys like seriously makes me nauseous. Have you guys ever done the go for no thing where, where you're like cranking through your list, um, just trying to see who's interested, like cold inviting everybody in your list. A lot of companies teach this still. You you're turning through your list and the whole idea is like, as people say no, as your friends and family reject you, it's like, yes, I've got another no. This is getting me closer to a yes. And then all the people that say, no, I'm not interested, which by the way, every person in their right mind should say no the first when a friend throws a network marketing opportunity at them, right? They, we throw them away like they're a dead body and move on. The thing is with go for yes, is that we're connecting with people, we're helping people, we're trying to make their day. And why would you expect somebody to jump on something? That, you know, you have to have a conversation with people. You have to bring value to their life before you can show them an opportunity. It's like walking up to somebody and proposing marriage. You wouldn't even walk up to somebody in most cases and ask them out. You need to start with hello. Does that make sense? And so the whole idea about relationship marketing is we're going to build trust. Now, <coughs> what's cool about this, let me see if I'll get, if I'll get lucky and this will start working again. Hey, it's working again. It's cool is there's four things you can do to build trust. And I'm going to teach them to you guys real quick. Here are the four essential ingredients to building trust. One, chemistry. Okay, I'll go through them quickly and then I'll break them out for you. The second one is character, character. The third is competence, competence. And the fourth is consistency. Chemistry, character, competence, consistency. The four essential ingredients to building trust. Okay. So how do you build trust? Chemistry. Chemistry is where you have common ground with someone. What is it about you they can relate to? Okay, chemistry is where you have common ground with someone. What is it about you they can relate to? This one you guys probably get right away. 
you know, but the bottom line is this, it's hard to, it's hard to do business with somebody you don't like. Right. And I, I like to bring this one up because I see so many people, you know, we use in our business, social media is like, you know, without social media, it's just really hard to build this business. Right. It's the most amazing thing. And a lot of times people think that they have the luxury of, of getting to be opinionated on social media when they're also building a business there. Right. Social media is a great example of you need to be finding common ground with others. That's your, that's your job. Finding common ground, not pointing out differences. Right. And so same thing with people. We need to connect by asking questions and finding out what it is that we have in common. Number two is character. Character is when you demonstrate how much you care and that you're relatable. Character is when you demonstrate how much you care and that you are relatable. Okay. Please notice something about this definition. It's not something you have. It's something you do. It's something you do. Um, a lot of times we get all caught up in this concept of, of my integrity. And, oh my gosh, how could you question my integrity? How dare you? And the truth is, guys, is that character is something you're doing. If somebody's questioning your character, your integrity, you need, instead of getting offended, which I'm guilty of doing the same, you need to take a look and say, am I actually demonstrating for this person? Okay. Number three. Oh, did it break again? Why? Why do? How dare you break again on me? What's happening? Number three is confidence. Okay. I don't need the dang slides. Number three is confidence. Confidence is when you demonstrate you're good at what you do and you're a business person. Okay. Confidence is when you demonstrate you're good at what you do and you're a business person. In other words, can you help me? I mean, like I, I took a look at your guys' products. You know, you, you obviously, if let's pretend I needed them. <laughs> I probably do need them. But let's pretend I was going to buy them from you. Could you help me? Could you get me the right colors? Could you, are, are you confident on the product to help me purchase the right product? Can I trust you to help me with that? Also, if I fall in love with this system and I join your team, are you a person I can trust to mentor me in this business? Or do I need to look for somebody else? Are you demonstrating your competence to me? Okay, now what's cool is when, when new people come on, a lot of times they don't have any of that competence yet, right? And a lot of times people teach them this concept, just fake it till you make it. Have you guys ever heard that? Just fake it till you make it? So I want to encourage everybody watching this, this with this. Don't fake anything. You don't need to fake it till you make it. You don't need to, okay? And if somebody ever says that to you, go, I'm sorry, like old school 1970s sales techniques are gone now. Don't fake anything. You got to be real and authentic. Okay. People have access to unlimited information. You can't get away with being fake. Right. Be real. But here's the cool thing. Your team has competence. You don't have to be when you start. You just need to lean into your team. Team, lean into your upline. Let people know, hey, I'm new, but we're going to plug into this together. Okay, and so when you guys are new, lean into your upline. Teach your team to lean into you until they have their own competence and then teach them to do the same thing with people they bring on. Okay, so a quick principle here before we jump to number four, and that's this. People only care about three things when they're going to go do business with you. They only care about three things. Can I trust you? Do you care about me? And are you good at what you do? Can I trust you? Do you care about me? And are you good at what you do? Whenever you guys have objections in your business about anything, it comes from these questions. These are heart questions. They're subconscious questions. They're not something someone's actually thinking, but they're feeling. And so when you bring people on your business, when you bring people onto your team and they're shaky, you had to overcome objections to get them there. You need to understand you have to continue investing in that relationship and building trust so that these questions are answered in their hearts. That is what will keep people long-term as customers and as artists on your team. Okay. Number four is consistency. Number four is consistency. Okay. <sighs> How many of you guys, when I say consistency, you're like, yeah, yeah, I know that one, but I hate the sound of that word. <laughs> right? It's hard. The thing about consistency, it's so hard. It's so yeah. hard. The thing about it is we're really good at it. <clears throat> We're really good at being consistent. We're just not good at being consistent with the new habits we want to create. Yes. All of our bad habits, we're really consistent at. Have you guys noticed that? Yes. Super good. Okay, so, but here's the thing about consistency. We're talking about building trust. 
When you need to build trust with people, here's the principle I want you to get. Of course, my slide's not working. Here's the, here's the principle. People respect consistency and desire it for themselves. People respect consistency and desire it for themselves. How important, as parents, how important is being consistent to building trust with your kids? You know, and it's no different with everybody else. People see it and they respect it. Have, have any of you guys ever been told that you're inspiring? People find you to be an inspiration. Maybe people follow you on social and they say, you're so inspiring. Has it ever felt weird when someone thinks you're inspiring and you're like, uh, if you only knew the dumb thing I just did, right? <laughs> It happens to all of us, but the thing is, is what, the, what it is about you that's inspiring people is when they see you doing things consistently, they respect it. They respect it. And they want it. In fact, not only does being consistent develop trust, but it actually attracts people to your business, which is kind of cool. It becomes like a, another marketing channel for them. All right. I'm going to be so done with this. Um, Hold on one second, guys. I'm going to try to get this thing to work one more time. We're trying to get cat. <coughs> Our other guest might be here any second. I think that's the dinging that we're hearing. Oh, she's trying to get in. <laughs> yeah, well, she's texting us like, should I still come? I forgot. Yeah, tell her to come in. There's still a lot of good stuff. Cool. Um, yeah, okay, so this... This slideshow doesn't want to work. We just had an, in, Apple just did an update on my computer today and I'm thinking that has to be it. Oh, I, I never do updates because it ruins everything every time. I tell you what. Okay, so here's a book I want you guys to put on your list. It's called Influence. This is what it looks like. Such a great book. This principle is actually from this book mm. by Robert Cialdini. This is one of the best psychology books for people in our business ever written. If you, if you don't, don't already know about it. It's a great book, um, but he talks about this idea of consistency being one of the driving motivators for people. So important. Okay, so chemistry, character, competence, consistency. Those are the ways that we build trust. All right, so here's my question for you guys, and I know you guys are consistent at posting on social media. You're consistent about doing a lot of the good stuff that you need to be doing in your business, but I need to ask you this. Are you as consistent with your relationships? Are you as consistent about staying in touch with your relationships as you are about doing things like that, posting on social media, being a product of your product, right? You know, and Zig Ziglar used to call this the checkup from the neck up. Here's the principle I want you guys to understand with this is that people won't believe you till they see you. What do I mean by this? You guys could have thousands of followers on social media who are watching you like a TV show. In fact, most people do have, especially in our business, have people who are following them like a TV show. And only a small percentage actually interact on your posts. So when you're talking about your business and you're talking about your new lifestyle and you're talking about how you want them to join you, most of them don't actually realize you're inviting them. See, if they haven't heard from you personally since high school, they don't believe it. Does that make sense? And that's why such a small percentage of people are interacting because some people are wired to interact publicly like that and the other ones are waiting for the invitation. So here's what I want you guys to understand, and that's that relationship building is a contact sport. You have to be in regular contact with people. I'm gonna show you guys how you need to be in one-on-one -on -one contact with everybody you know. You can do it in less than an hour a day. I know time is scarce, I'll show you guys that in a minute. But here's the principle I want you to get, and that's this. Investing time and connecting with people is the only way to deepen relationships. Investing time and connecting with people is the only way to deepen relationships. I just want to give you guys a quick example of this. Hi, Kat. Welcome. All right, just a quick example. Have you guys ever received, talking about a principle right now, Kat, that um, investing time and connecting with people is the only way to deepen a relationship. Have you guys ever received a card from somebody, like a really great card? You know the kind where it's mostly white space and they wrote a great heartfelt message in there, right? You get the card. Do you, are you, are you guys babies like me? Do you get emotional when you read those? Yes. Okay. So after you read a great card like that and, and you had that emotional response, did you, as soon as you're done, you just crumple that card up and throw it in the trash can. Do you guys save those and keep them somewhere? 
I save them. I have a whole board, especially from my kids, of like really long time ago, special, even sticky notes that say like, I love you, mom. Misspelled yeah. everywhere. It <laughs> means so much, right? In fact, when people, actually when people pass away, the thing that is most treasured by their families are the old letters and cards that are left behind. Isn't it amazing how that value lingers over time? Now, here's another thing. Here's another example. Have you guys ever received something like this? This is a happy birthday postcard. I got it from my insurance salesman. <laughs> right? You ever get one of these? From like yep. the doctor, the dentist, whatever. And look, it even looks like it's handwritten, but it's not actually handwritten. It just has handwriting that's printed on it. Oh, wow. So when you guys get these postcards, like from whatever, the chiropractor or the dentist, does this go in the special place that those other cards went? No. You have no problem throwing this away, right? No. We, actually, you know, I live in Southern California. Actually, I know, are you guys in California too? I am. I okay, a couple of you guys are. So here, you know, we don't use our doors. We drive our car right into the garage, you know, and then we go into our house and then the, <laughs> it's like the drawbridge closing behind you. <laughs> yeah. So I actually have my shredders in the garage between the car and the, and the door. So stuff like this doesn't even make it in, right? It just gets disposed of before it even gets in the house. This has no value. But meanwhile, a, a, a birthday card from somebody you love with a beautiful message is priceless. Not only will you treasure it, but people in your family will treasure it after you're gone. What's the difference? Why does this have no value? Because it had no time invested in it. And I have people all the time that are like, uh, mar should I do marketing automation? Why? Automated marketing has no value. There's no time involved. People don't value that. Now, can you get a sale that way? Yeah. But do you build a relationship that way? No way. Make sense? This has no value because it has no time. Now, you need to be investing time in people one-on-one -on -one if you want to build relationships with them. Do you, it does not, it's not all about writing letters and cards, so that is... That is an important thing to do is whenever you can because people will keep it forever, right? But I mean, even just messaging somebody on Facebook Messenger or texting somebody one-on-one -on -one makes an impact. It shows an investment of time and a level of care. I'm going to show you guys how to systemize that so that you are making people's day, dozens of people a day, and watching your business build. It's so fulfilling. I'm going to show you guys that in a minute. But I just wanted to give you guys that principle because it's so huge. Okay, investing time and connecting with people is the only way to deepen relationships. So this is what you guys need. You need a system. You need a way to stay in contact with everybody you know. Regular contact. You need to know when to contact them. And what I mean by this is without spending two hours of planning to do an hour of, of contact, you need to just know, like, who should, who should I reach out to today? Who should I not reach out to today? Know what to say. What I mean by that is don't spend all day figuring out how to message the perfect thing, Right? Just start a conversation and go and know what to say. And then make sure that nobody's ever falling through the cracks. Uh, have you guys experienced that? It's so frustrating when you have somebody who's interested. You've worked it so hard. You've got them interested. They're excited. And then what happens? They're not ready right now. So you're like, okay, that's okay. I'll just give you some time. Next thing you know, they're on someone else's team. It's heartbreaking. They just fell through the cracks. I mean, you plant the seed with somebody and water it and put sunshine on it, the whole thing. You need to be present at harvest time. If not, someone else will be. You've got to have a foolproof system. All right. Okay, so was that helpful going through some of those principles with you guys? Sorry we had so many technical difficulties. Absolutely. Let's hope, let's hope the internet works. Let me show you Teamsy. So I've got my brand new, check it out. My brand hey. new Mascara Beauty version of Teamsy. I'm very excited for this. Um, so what I'm going to do is, first of all, I, I want you guys to know this. Teamsy is free for 30 days. You go to teamsy.com, hit free trial, choose Mascara Beauty. It's 30 days free, no credit card, no strings attached, nothing weird. We want you to try it out and really use it and love it. Okay. We've had over 50,000 network marketers use Teamsy and we've done it all with the free no strings attached trial. People love it. Okay. And that's what we want for you guys too. So go get your free trial started if you haven't done it already. When you first drop into your free trial, it'll take you into a setup wizard, which makes setup easy. I'll walk you guys through it really quick. If you've already dismissed that, you can get your setup wizard back from this, from these settings over here. Okay. So first thing you can do is sign up for Facebook messenger tips. That'll help you during your trial because we know you won't read the emails we send you. At least this way you'll get some good helpful tips as we go. Okay. <laughs> That's funny. It's true. So, it's true. 
Uh, you know what's so funny is I talk to network marketers and they're like, so I don't understand why these people don't respond to my emails. Like, really? How many emails have you, have you not read in your email box today? I mean, it's usually more than a thousand on the average person. So why are people sending emails still and expecting responses crazy? Okay, so anyways, that's a little side note. What we're gonna do is three things. We're gonna set your income goal, okay? And I'll show you, a team will take your income goal and tell you what to do every day to achieve it, which is cool, okay? And then we're gonna help you create a powerful why so that you have kind of some staying power. We'll talk about how most people quit this business and this is the reason why they quit. And then we'll get all your contacts into Teams so that you're actually organized and you know what to do. Pretty cool. I just did all this this past week and I love it. You mean with your Teamsy account, Brittany? Yeah, I got, oh, I got like the setup wizard going and I just, I love that it makes people think like, what's my why? Let me document it so I can see it every day of my life when I log in. Yeah, cool. see? Well, I'll show you right now. So let's set an income goal. Okay, <clears throat> you're gonna have just a zero here, put a number in. I'm gonna put 150,000, okay? Cause that was actually my goal when I started this process. Okay, so, um, if you guys are already making great income from your business, here's what I want you to do for your goals. This is based on somebody starting out. Um, this is the income level they wanna be at 12 months from now. If you're already making great income, I want you to, to um, put the difference. How much do you wanna increase it over the next 12 months? Make sense? Okay. So I put in 150,000, I'm gonna click continue. Now Team Z has, has crunched the numbers and figured out that I need to, over the next 12 months, reach out and connect with 4,348 people, okay? 4,348 people. Okay, so that seems like a big number, and a lot of people will look at this and go, wow, that's a big number. But if you need to eat an elephant, how do you do it? One, One bite, bite at a time. time. That's right, yes. Okay, so <laughs> the next page will break it down for us. And first it takes it into three groups, prospects, customers, and artists on my team. Okay, and then it breaks it down monthly, weekly, and daily. So now I've got a daily target suggestion connect with nine prospects each day, six customers, and four artists on my team each day. So that's 19 people, okay? That is literally 20 minutes of work. I'll show you guys that in a second. And then also, it's got an invite goal, which is three, and an ad goal, which is three. So an invite, okay, so let me just tell you what this is. A connect is just starting a conversation. The goal of a connect is just to get somebody to smile, make their day, that's it. We want to connect, make their day, and hopefully start a conversation. That's it. An invite is where we're telling somebody about the business, inviting them to a call, inviting them to an event, um, inviting them to try something, okay? So you can see that we're not inviting everybody we talk to. We're going to generate interest first. I'll show you guys how that works. And then ads, don't do that. these are just new people you're putting on your list every day. Okay. Now, all these numbers you can change. You can write over them. They're just a suggestion. Okay. <laughs> I changed that to 10 because I want this to add up to 20 because I just anal like that. I'd rather have 20 than 19 a day. Also, if you're brand new, let's say you have nobody on your team, you can take this artist number and make it a zero and then add that four over here to your prospects number. Okay? So if you're brand new, you might want to set your customer and your artist numbers to zero for now and put it all in prospects because you don't have anybody on those, in those categories. Whatever you, whatever you have in these boxes, when you click continue, your dashboard will be configured to your goals. Okay, so each one of you will have your own dashboard set up for your goals, which is pretty cool. Okay, so next thing we're gonna do is find your why. Finding your why is huge because one out of two people in this business will quit the first year. Okay, one out of two people will quit the first year. As you're building your team, look around. Half of them will be gone a year from now. It's crazy, and it's so much work. The truth is, is that people quit. You and me included. We all quit. That's what we do because we want to keep our, our, like our subconscious mind wants to keep us safe. The only time that we are able to overcome that urge to quit and be wildly successful at anything is when there's a reason. When there's a reason. You need a reason. That's why the my why is so huge. Guys, think about this for a second. I see a couple of you guys have, I can see your kids in the background, which is awesome. And mine were about to burst through as well. My wife just came in. I saw her come in on the baby monitor and grab the baby are there days where you just don't feel like um, feeding your kids, like making them food? Like have you guys ever experienced that, right? Now, did you, right? I always, <laughs> I always use this analogy because people sometimes don't feel like doing the work for their business today. There's, as moms, you felt that. 
did you ever actually not feed them? Like, did you ever fail to feed them? No. You, did you quit? Did you ever quit feeding your kids because you didn't feel like it? No, of course you didn't. The reason, the reason you didn't is because you have a powerful why. You have a powerful why. The reason to keep your kids alive and healthy is a powerful motivator for you. So there's no way you would quit that. Yet it's easy to go, uh, to, to go a whole Friday without feeding your business, isn't it? The difference is you haven't figured yes. out the why for your business yet that is as powerful as the one you have for your kids. Maybe, maybe it's your kids that need to be the why for both. The bottom line, guys, is this is why people quit because they haven't figured out why they need to persist. Okay? So <clears throat> let me show you this process. A lot of times people won't do it because they think it's some sort of weird, mystical, hippy-dippy uh, thing they have to go on live in a wigwam to get figured out. <laughs> I'm living a wigwam. You know what I mean? Yeah. You don't have to do that. It's not that difficult. The truth is, is you already know your why. It's in your heart. We just got to get it to your head. Okay. Exactly. So there's a few questions that, that I like to ask, and you guys can go through this process. I'll, I'll share my story with you as an example. And lead your team through this process. Help them uncover their why. Now, your why is going to get better and deeper as you go, but you need a starting point. Okay. So here's the first question. Why did you become an artist? Okay, so my story was, I told you guys in the beginning, I used to be a beach body coach. So I'm going to share that story. I became a beach body coach because I used their products and it changed everything. I became healthy. I lost a bunch of weight. And I was already talking about it with everybody. People were saying, dude, what are you doing? And I would tell them, oh, I'm doing this. I'm doing this. All day long, right? Do, you, do people ask you guys what you're doing? And you tell them. You're excited. <clears throat> I, I signed up as a distributor because my wife was like, dummy, you could be getting paid for that all day long. So she's smarter than me. So I did what she said. I signed up. Next question. What do you hope to accomplish? So in my case, I just wanted to make 500 bucks a month extra money. That's, that was my whole goal. 500 bucks a month extra money. I wasn't where I am now where I want to change the industry, where I want to <clears throat> turn it to a place where people are caring for each other and building relationships instead of the find them, please them, and forget them mentality. I wasn't there yet. I just wanted 500 bucks a month. That's all. Okay. Next question. Why is it important to you? I wanted... To take the reason I wanted 500 bucks a month, it wasn't a random number. I wanted to save that. I wanted to put it in savings. Now, just to give you guys some some background on where I was at at the time, I told you that I come from the coaching and consulting industry. For for at that point, for about 12 years or so, I had been coaching real estate people on how to build their business, primarily real estate people. And that business was so good. I mean, it was growing. Real estate was going up, 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 up. And I know you guys said you're in California. You really experienced it. Oh, yeah. And, and then what happened at the end of 2008? It just popped, right? I mean, it was so scary. Our business started sliding so fast, our heads were spinning. And we started laying people off left and right. Eventually, I lost my job myself. And as the sole breadwinner of my family, I had to go figure out how to rebrand myself in a completely different industry and make a living, like now, right? And... By God's good grace, we made it. Like I found, I found work. It worked. We made it. But we used all our savings and we stopped saving. We just started just barely getting by for years. So when I got to this stage of the game where I was writing my why, I hadn't saved any money in almost seven years. Not a penny. Not a penny. And we had one of those because I'm pretty, pretty good with my finances. Like we had the automatic transfer to savings every month and then I'd go in and manually put it back because <laughs> we needed it, right? <clears throat> and so I just wanted that, I just wanted that $500 a month going in savings again. It was going to be an emotional victory for me. Does that make sense? And a lot of times your team members or even yourself will come up with something like that and if you think about it for a second, there's a deeper reason behind it. The next question, what would achieving this mean for you and your family? I wanted to buy a, ho a home. Now, I wasn't ready to go tiny. I wanted to go bigger. <laughs> Sorry, it's just, it's the truth. We had all these kids. We had, at the time, and, um, we had two big Rottweilers, you know, and, and three kids, one on the way. Like there was, we were on top of each other and we couldn't get it. We couldn't move into a bigger place because we were $250,000 upside down because of what happened to the economy on our mortgage and we weren't saving money. I was like, man, if I could just start saving money and do it long enough, then someday we'd be able to buy a new house. That's what I was thinking. Now I get to the last question. Why is that meaningful? 
How does this make you feel? Now, just to, just to understand something, guys, in five minutes, I went from, okay, I'll sign up for extra money to, wow, I'm visualizing our new house. I'm getting excited about my goals already, right? The last question, why is it meaningful? How does this make you feel? This is where I had to confront the idea that buying a home might not be a meaningful goal. It might be materialistic. I don't know. What do you guys think? So as I thought about this for a little bit, I, I went on the second half, which was how does it make you feel? And I realized something. The home, buying a new home wasn't necessarily what I wanted. It was symbolic of something deeper, right? Because the home represents family. I realized I'd never given myself, I'd never had time to think about this. I was too busy trying to make a living, but I was missing my family. I never saw my kids. I was completely missing their growing up. I'd get up in the morning before the sun came up, get ready for work. I would leave. My kids would be in their pajamas. I'd kiss them goodbye, go to work. I'd work all day long. I'd come back in the evening. They'd already had their dinner without me. They were in the bath getting ready for bed. I'd come home. I was the dad who tucked them in. <clears throat> that was my whole relationship. And they often didn't even call me daddy. They'd call me by the names of their teachers or they'd call me mom or they'd call me grandma, whatever came to mind, but it wasn't dad, right? And it was, it was crushing, heart crushing. Uh, much less being around my wife. I mean, we spent, you know, 30 minutes together when the kids were down before I was exhausted and had to go to bed myself. And so I was missing it. I mean, why was I working so hard for what? I was missing my whole family. Everything, was, everything that mattered wasn't really a part of my life. And I had felt up to this moment, like, this is just the way it is. You got to work hard and provide for your family and that's it. And, and you just don't get to be with them. And something happened right here, guys. <clears throat> it wasn't the house that I needed. I, I needed to build a different life for us. And a switch happened. Going through this my why process for me, a switch happened. I realized something. My career, which I was well-respected. I was at the top of my career, right? In the business coaching arena, I was at the top. But yet I wasn't able to save money for six years. My career wasn't going to get me there. I was stuck, completely stuck. However, this little side thing that I was, thought was going to make me extra money, this could get me there. And I realized something. I flipped the switch on it. I realized this. My salary at my career, that was my extra money. My network marketing business, this was a future that I could pursue. 10 minutes, I realized this was more than extra money, that I needed to leverage my salary to fuel my business. I wrote my first why, which I'm going to share for you guys. It's the sample text in, in Teamsy for you. <clears throat> and it changed everything. This was the first why that I wrote. My why, to create a life where I never have to worry about money again. I enjoy quality time with my family. I'm present for my children on a daily basis. I'm healthy. I'm full of energy. Simple, so simple. But as soon as I wrote that, guys, and whatever you type in this box, by the way, that's sample text, whatever you actually type here, your why, when you hit continue, it will save it to your dashboard. Okay, and it'll be there for you to read every day. So we'll do that in a minute. I wrote this why and everything changed for me. I made a goal to um, leave my job in three months and be focused on my business, which was scary, right? Because I had figured out that if I didn't have income within 60 days, every, we'd lose everything, right? Everything would be due. I went to, I didn't have any place to work. If I came home to work, I had nowhere to work. I already told you we were on top of each other. So I went to Home Depot, you guys, and I bought one of those sheds they have in the parking lot. Have you seen those at Home Depot? Yes. <laughs> this is how I went tiny, Brittany. I bought a shed. I had it dropped in my backyard. You had a heat on the shed. Dirt, on the dirt because it didn't, I didn't have the money for, for concrete. And, um, and I ran an extension cord out there, put my Mac out there, and I started building my business out there. Um, I didn't even, you know, they sell the stuff they put behind showers that's made of the same stuff that a whiteboard's made of. I got a 13 by four sheet of that at Home Depot and I nailed it to a wall and had a giant whiteboard. Like we called it the shed quarters. I started building my business out there. That's awesome. amazing. And in the, a picture of that. I'll, I'll, I'll send you guys one after this. Quarters. We need to visual like yep. people get stuck on that sometimes. Like, oh, I don't have an office or I don't have recording equipment. And, you know, yep. I think that's so powerful. I used the, the built-in camera on my Mac and it was an old Mac too. And, you know, until I could afford something else. And I would, I would do webinars and team calls and I would be dripping sweat. <laughs> And it, because I had that why, I had the why driving me. Yeah. You know? And there are days when you don't feel like it. Are you guys with me? Like, you know, I knew, 
And I'm going to show you guys how to do this in a second. Like in 30 minutes, 30 minutes I reached out to 20 people. I knew this. Still some days I didn't want to do it. And I'd have to look at that why and go, I want to be with my kids. I don't want to be worried about money. I got to make this happen. And all I need to do is get my stuff done. Let's go do it. You know what I mean? It just kind of kicks you in the butt, keeps you going. So this why is so important. The reason we built this into Teamsy, I mean, honestly, we didn't have to. We did it because we know you guys need it to be successful. Your team needs it to be successful. Without it, your chances of quitting are about 100%. Yep. You know? And so you've got to have something like that driving you. Okay. Last step for setup, we're going to get your lists in, get them um, imported, right? Um, if you guys ever want to get specific instructions for your team on how to get it out of, the, out of your back office, we can set up another Zoom. You can show it to me and we'll write them down, put, them in, put a video in here for your team, which would be pretty cool. But what you're going to do is you're going to want to get your, first you want to get your artist list, like your first level people into Teamsy. That's the first thing you want to put in there. Then you want to get your customers, right? So get all your customers in there. Then you want to get, the next thing you want to do is like grab your Facebook friends. There's, an, there's a video here on how to do it. Get all your Facebook friends imported. If you start with that, you've got a great uh, group to work with. And then anywhere else that you have contacts, you bring them all into Teamsy so they're in one place. If you're using pads of paper, oh my gosh, the pad's never in your hand when you need it. If you're spiral notebooks, spreadsheets, like you're hurting me. That's why people fall through the cracks. You need to have a system like this where everybody's in one place organized, okay? And then there's one more step for setup. At the, once you've imported these lists, you're gonna rank them, okay? So let me show you what this looks like. Let me skip over here. On your team page, which is like your CRM inside Teamsy where everybody lives, you're gonna be in rank mode. I'll turn it on right here, this little thing. It's gonna automatically put you here after an import. Rank mode, you go down your list and you rank people on a five-star scale. You guys know how to do this, right? You do it all the time. Five stars is awesome. One star is not so much. The reason we rank our relationships is so that we can talk more often to the people with the highest ranks, okay? The principle is this. You prioritize relationships so you can prioritize time. And in relationship marketing, you have to spend more time with the best people. If you don't prioritize your people, you'll end up spending more time with the turkeys because they'll steal it from the good people, right? The squeaky wheel doesn't get the oil until the best people have been talked to. Make sense? All right, so let me show you how this works. I'm just gonna give you, open up these definitions. A five star is somebody most likely to become a customer or an artist, or they're an existing customer or artist that's a rock star. Five star people will come up on your up next list every 30 days. Remember, this isn't a cold invite. This is just a, hey, how are you today message to connect and deepen your relationship. Four stars is somebody likely to become a customer or artist with a little bit of nurturing, right? Or they're just the solid people on your team. They're going to show up every 60 days. Three stars could go either way. You don't know. In fact, everyone will default to three stars when you create their contact record because we don't know. A three star comes up every 90 days. Okay. And then two stars are every 120 days. They're getting colder. One stars actually will never come up on your up next list. You'll have to go to the team page to find them. Okay. They're like your cold storage people, but that's how the five star ranking system works. You can also change the ranks all the time as you go, you know, up or down, depending on where they are in your relationship. But you're going to go through this list one time quickly. Everyone will be three star to start. And you're going to look for the people that you feel good about that you want to, you know, make four stars or five stars, cherry pick those people. Okay. And once you've done a first cut on this, now teams, has got everything it needs to create your power hour for you every day. You never have to plan. You never have to think. You just turn it on and go from here on out. Pretty cool, right? So let me show you guys how to do, do a power hour. <clears throat> so you can see right here in the center, this section, we call this section the power hour. Okay. We're going to work there in a second. Up here where it says today's activities, these are the goals that we set. In this case, it was to connect with 10 prospects, six customers, and four artists, okay? And then to invite three and add three to my list. So now I'm gonna go down to work my power hour. On the left side here is the who's up next. There's four lists, prospects, customers, artists, and my follow-ups list, okay? On the right side is where I log my activity. By the way, this is mobile, so once you've set it up, you can do all this on your phone, which is cool. You don't have to be in front of a computer to do your power hour. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. First person on my list is Brittany. I've got Facebook open up here. I'm gonna message her on Facebook. I like Facebook Messenger as my first choice for communication. It has the best response rate of anything, okay? 
You can communicate with people however you want. Teams e-logs, a bunch of different types. See, look, if you select activity, you can do Facebook message, Instagram, text, Snapchat, LinkedIn. You can call them on the phone. You can send them a card. You can meet them for coffee, whatever. But Facebook Messenger is my favorite. My second favorite would probably be text because they get the best response rates, okay? And they're fast and easy. That's also good, right? Okay, so look, I've got Facebook open there because you have to send messages through Facebook. You can't do it through any app. Facebook makes you use them, which is okay. They, they rule the world. <laughs> so now I'm going to message Brittany. And this is where you get stuck because it's like, what do I say? I've never messaged her before. I don't even remember how we became friends. <laughs> do you guys ever, is, is this you, right? Do you get stuck so on this? Funny because it is. That's, it's always the funniest when it's so true. So here's the thing. Don't worry about that. Just come down here and click scripts. Okay. I'll help you get the conversation started. We've got a couple of great scripts that start conversations. They're not salesy. They work great. So I'm going to grab a Facebook script and I'm just going to grab this first one. Hi, Jane. It's been just stopping by to say hello. How are you? Hope your day is awesome. Okay. Look, I'm going to copy that script. So now it's on my clipboard or what do you recall that? Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to paste it in here so I can change the name safely here and not do it on Facebook in case I mess, make a mistake because I have been known to send the wrong name. No I did that yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. It's so embarrassing. Guilty. It totally happened. <laughs> and then I just, you know what I do when that happens is I just go, you know what? I'm so sorry. I have four kids and I never get their name right on the first one either. Um, <laughs> but my heart's in the right place. Just call me Susan for the rest of the week. We'll call you. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> People usually laugh and then you have, then guess what? The goal was to start a conversation and we did. Right. So uh, don't over own that. Don't, don't like fall on your sword with embarrassment. Just get over it. You know what I mean? Okay. So here's the thing. Here's the message. It's ready to go. This message is designed to make her day. It's just to make someone's day mindset message. Okay. I copied it now the way I want it. Oh, you know what else you can do here? If you're like me, got to put the emoticons in there. Right. <laughs> just right. So got to get an emoticon in there. Okay. Whatever emoticons you like. The emoticons definitely make it friendly, right? So now I'm going to jump back over to team. I mean, I mean to Facebook and I'm going to look her up. Okay. <laughs> it only takes a second. Look, there she is. I'm going to send this message. Bam. Look how easy this is. Now, now sent. I'm done. I'm going to go back here and I'm going to finish logging it. That was a Facebook message. Log connect. Watch what happens to my dashboard. She's gone. The list has moved up. I have one. I need to get to 10 until I'm done with this, right? So I'll go to J. Next person is J. Guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to use that same script that's already on the clipboard. Why overthink wor the world? Yeah. I'm upset. I'm seriously just so obsessed with this idea because we preach um, like a DMO, you know, like a daily method of operation or something. We've mm -hmm. had them go through and write down. We've printed out these things that they can print out and keep. But, you know, either they don't want to keep it on their computer or they don't want to print it out and use up all their ink or they, you know, Excel spreadsheets get long and lengthy. And so tracking these conversations and just being able to log in, whether you're on vacation or it's just, it's so much more streamlined. And I feel like it, I don't know. I love it. Keep going. Sorry. <laughs> no, I'm with you. And when you said Excel sheets and printouts and stuff, you have to understand that like that hurt my, that hurt me. <laughs> <laughs> and that stuff hurts your ears. Yeah, I can't even stand it. I mean, you know, somebody who worked 15 years in a corporate job, I always had somebody to handle the spreadsheets for me because I hated them that much. When you become an entrepreneur, you got to do it yourself. Look, next person on my list was Jay. I just want you guys to see how quick and easy this is. I got the same exact message. I changed the name, sent. Okay, I'm gonna log it and keep going down my list. There's two. You can. Do you guys see how I can do 20 people in 30 minutes easy? Now, a couple tips here. Be disciplined not to answer them. When they start answering you back, don't get in the conversation until you're done going through all three lists, okay? So just keep sending. You want to get all your proactive messages out. Okay, so we're going to go down our list all the way down until I get to 10. Then I'll jump to my next list, list, which is customers. We're going to stay in touch with our customers the same way. Now, when I come over here for Luis, I'm going to go to scripts. Now I'm going to have different scripts. They're going to be customer-specific scripts, Okay. So, um, you know, it's Josie, it's been a pleasure working with you. And I want you to know I'd be honored to help any of your friends and family too. If you think of anyone who'd benefit from unparalleled beauty products or even just someone to talk to about their parents, please message me with their name and contact info. I'll take it from there. Sound good? Is this something that we can set up for our downlines as far as scripting or is that something they have to manually do themselves? All these scripts that you're looking at are in here for everybody. 
they can save their own scripts in here as well, but you're not able to put one into their account. Okay. But you can give them scripts and say, put them in your team. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yep. So Eric, you've, you've already pre-written these scripts for a mascara artist is basically what you're saying. Yeah. These are, okay, so here's the thing I want you guys to know. These scripts that are in here are ones that work. We just change the verbiage to fit your business. These scripts are simple and easy. A lot of times people overthink this. Look, here's my favorite one. How are you enjoying the whatever product somebody bought? Send me an update. Let me know how I can be of help. Just a simple little connect, right? Here's another one. Just checking in to see if there's anything I can do to make your day. People have to be in touch with their customers regular, and it doesn't have to be like, hey, I just just checking to see if you want to put anything on your order this month. It needs to be check-ins because here's the thing. Your customers, when you're in regular contact with your customers, and I know, I know I'm talking to leaders, you guys know this, but I'm making this also for your team. We're going to watch this recording. Being in touch with your customers, two things. One, it serves them better. It helps the relationship, but they're going to order more. They're going to order more products when you're in touch with them, period. You want to increase your team volume by 20%, have everybody stay in contact with their customers. That's it. Now, also, people that are on recurring orders, they're going to stay longer if you're in touch with them. So you need to be in touch with your customers. But the most important reason, guys, write this part down because this is huge. I, do, I, do a full, I have a full training course on this that we sell all day long on how to do this. But your current customers are your best and hottest source for a new customer. When somebody has a product that they love, they talk about it. It's like they're vomiting it all over everybody, but in a good way. Like if you guys go to a great restaurant, a great movie, like you can't talk about anything else. We're just designed to share good things with each other. And so your customers who love the products already have talked to people and are talking to people now. They're talking to people right now who are ready to make a purchase with you. You just don't know it. You have to be talking to your customers and getting introduced to those people. Okay, or they're going to end up buying it from somebody else. So if, you, if you're thinking about, hmm, where am I going to generate new customers this month? You just got to be in touch with your current ones because that is the best place to find new people, right? And if people say, well, yeah, I've actually been talking, I was talking to three of my girlfriends the other day and they're all interested. Guess what? You've got a new artist. <laughs> that's where you're like, oh, that's awesome. Let me talk to your three people and let's set them up under you. Hello. Are you guys with me? Staying in touch with the customers is the most neglected thing in our business, and it's the easiest way to keep your business cranking. So we're going to go do the same thing. We're going to go down our customer list. We're going to send our messages, staying in contact with them, starting conversations with them, making their day. When I'm done with my sixth goal on this one, I'm going to go to artists, and I'm going to start connecting with people on my team. This is why we call it Teamsy, because it's about these relationships. It's about the family, the culture you build with your team right? Yeah. And as a team gets big, what typically will happen is, you know, you guys will do things like create a Facebook page, which is great. You'll do live Zoom calls like this with your team, which is great. But people need to hear from you one-on-one. -on -one. And just sending them a quick message, a text, a Facebook message, letting them know that you're proud of them, letting them know that you're rooting for them means the world. It means the world. So we're going to do that. We're going to jam down our list, boom, 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 send our messages. And now we're done with our prospects, our customers, our artists. In this example, it was 20 people maybe 30 minutes of work. Now I'm going to get to my fourth list, my follow-ups. Notice there's nobody on your follow-ups list. Teamsy doesn't automatically put people on your follow-ups list. This is what you guys do when you have sent an invite. Now, notice that we, we sent 20 messages. They were just nice messages, getting people started on a conversation. So how do I get people onto my follow-ups list? Okay, this is, this is kind of like the hot list. So let me give you an example. I sent a message to my friend Jay. and um, and so we're catching up. She's like, oh my gosh, great to hear from you. We're messaging back and forth. What are you up to? This is what I'm doing, you know, and I'm catching up and I'm asking questions. I want you guys to understand something from the relationship marketing perspective. When I'm asking Jay questions, my goal is to help her with something, anything. I want to help her with something today or tomorrow, whenever that conversation is going on, I want to help her with something. It may have nothing to do with my business. My goal is to find, is to uncover a want or a need that I can fulfill for her. So I can let her know that's what I'm here for is to help her. And it may be, she just need, needs someone to pray with her about something. Guys, I, I will tell you how shocked I am, how often people need someone to pray for them. In my, in my business, I would say once a day, a customer asks me to pray for them and their family for something, which I find it to be an incredible honor. And that just is a testament to how you're building relationships with people. But maybe they need a recommendation somewhere. They need a new dentist for their kids. I mean, that comes up. Anything. 
whatever you can do to help somebody. Sometimes you find a, a something they want to learn more about. You can find an article and send it to them. You're looking for a way to help in the conversation. Now, as the conversation continues and progresses, she's asking me now about, well, what about you? What are you up to these days? You know, how's your job going? Oh, I left my job two years ago. You did? Yeah, I left my job two years ago. I started building my own business. What are you doing? How's that going? Oh, it's going great. So we're having a conversation, right? And now what I'm doing is I am going to invite her using the pain points she told me. And she told me that she hates her boss. I'm going to say, you know what the coolest things is? I'm my own boss. <laughs> you know, I miss my kids. I'd missed my kids too, but now I get to be with them all the time. Sometimes too much. <laughs> right. And so, and so she's like, wow, that really sounds interesting. You know, Jay, honestly, you'd probably be great at this too. If you'd ever, if you're ever interested in learning more about it, let me know. I mean, we've got things going all the time where you can learn more about it. She goes, I might be interested in that. Okay, great. Well, you know what? My team's actually doing a, a, a live Facebook event tonight where we're going to talk about the opportunity. Right. You know, are you available tonight? I can send you the link. You can tune in and, and learn about it. She's like, wow, Eric. Yeah, I would do that. Great. I'm going to, I'll send you that link. I'll email you over that link right now, Jay. And then um, I'll connect with you tomorrow and see if you have any questions. She's perfect. So that's an invite. That's an example, right? Of how I took that connect and I brought her through to an invite. Okay. So, <laughs> so here's how we do it in Teamsy. I got to look her up. She's not on my dashboard anymore. So I got to look her up now by typing a piece of her name. There she is. That brings me back to her contact record. Okay. Now people always ask me, do you log all the back and forths in Teamsy? I'll be honest with you guys. I don't. I feel like that's a waste of time. What's important is that now I'm going to put it on my follow-ups list. But if you want to, you can go back to the activity feed. You can open up that original um, one there and you can paste in your whole conversation if that's important to you. But I feel like that conversation is in Facebook, so I don't even care. What I'm going to do now is log that I invited her. So I'm opening the connect box on her record. It's just like the one on the dashboard, right? But this time I'm going to click this little invite thing on the bottom left. Look at this. Instead of a default connect, this was a, what was it? An opportunity okay. call. Let's call it an opportunity call. Online event. How's that? Online event. Great. So I'm inviting her to the online event. And I'm just going to put on here. Okay. And that was, I sent her an email. Great. Now, before I log this on her record, I need to click follow up. See right here in the center? Because otherwise, she's not going to be on my follow ups list. She's just going to come back in a month. I need her on my follow ups list. So I'm going to set a follow up for tomorrow. See that? Now, when I log it, it logs that as an invite. I'll show you on the dashboard in a second. And it put her on my follow ups list. She's due tomorrow. So check this out. Now you can see I've got an invite logged. And on my follow ups list, there she is. So as I'm connecting with people and having conversations, some of them are going to move to an invite. Some of them won't be ready for an invite. I haven't talked to him since high school. We're still on the hello phase, right? And that's fine because if that conversation peters out, goes nowhere, they're going to come back up in a month or two months. And then I'll continue the conversation again. Like, Hey, it's been a couple months. What are you up to? Right. And each time it gets warmer, but some of those conversations are going to progress. So in this case, my goal was just three out of three out of 20, three out of 20. I was going to invite, put on my follow-ups list. So tomorrow now, when I do my, my power hour, I do the same thing. I go down my contact, my prospects. I go down my customers. I go down my artists. Now I'm going to go down my follow-ups list and send follow-ups. And this is how easy it is, by the way, guys. When I go to do my follow-up for her, again, I'm going to go to scripts, and I'm going to grab a follow-up script. Here's one. Follow-up number one. Hi, Jane. Just checking in like I promised I would. What questions do you have for me? Okay? Cool? We're going to do it exactly the same way. By the way, there are 10 in here, so you don't even have to think. You can just use mine. Okay, put your emoticons in, whatever. I'll copy that and I'll send it to her real quick. I still got her up. There she is. I'm gonna send, Jay works for Teamsy, so she lets me, all day long she knows I'm doing a demo. Okay. <laughs> Wait, she does where did the same you get thing. the emoticons on the other, on the other page? Um, well, if you, if you are on your phone, you know how to do it, right? On, my, yeah. on a Mac, let's yeah, use Mac. I use a Mac. It's Control Command Space Bar to get your emoticon menu. Oh There's my a God. keyboard shortcut for your computer. You just got to Google it. I didn't know that. That's me amazing. either. Oh my gosh! Life changing once you can do. Wait, wait. Menu. Command Space Bar. <laughs> control Command Space Bar. Oh my gosh. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. Well, we learned something new. <laughs> That's life changing right there. Yeah, See what right? <laughs> it brings it up. Okay. Okay. All right. So you send it the same way. Now, 
Now, one thing is really important, guys. When you log a follow-up, <laughs> you must set the next follow-up so she doesn't fall off your list. Okay, set the next follow-up. So now I've sent that follow-up. Tomorrow, she'll be on my list again for tomorrow. Now, <clears throat> really quick, this is huge. And I know you guys know fortunes in the follow-up, right? Mm -hmm. this, is the, this is the part where people fail. Did you guys know that 80% of all sales happen between the seventh and 10th follow-up? 80%. Okay, all right, just honestly, anyone here follow up 10 times consistently? Yeah. It's very rare. You know what's even rare, more rare? Is to find people who follow up more than three times. Right. So that means the vast majority of people in this business are scrambling for 20% for or less of the available business. Yeah. Okay, here's the thing. <clears throat> Two reasons why people don't follow up 10 times on someone who's interested. One, they don't have a system that would allow them to be that organized because you, they fall through the cracks after three or four. I mean, let's be honest, because you've moved on so many conversations. But the biggest one is psychological. People just won't do it because they're afraid of being annoying. Like they just don't want to be annoying. They're too uncomfortable with it, right? Now, here's the good news. I'm going to teach you guys how to do this without being annoying. Cool, right? So whether yeah. or not you use Teams, you'll have that to take with you. But you have to have a mindset shift first, and this is the deal. Do you believe in your product? Do you believe this opportunity is life-changing? I mean, are you guys here to change lives, honestly? Like, are you excited about that, or is it just- Fired up, to... fired up about that. Good. I'm gonna start calling you a... coach from now on. Is that okay, by the way? What's that? Since you're a beach body coach, I feel like I should start calling you coach from now on. I'm just gonna, yeah, coach, I'm fired up. Oh, uh, you can call me coach. No, I'm not a beach. I'm not. A, I'm not with beach body anymore. I don't, I'm not with anybody now. I just help y'all. <laughs> me and coach. But here's the thing: if you guys believe that, do you, do you? I mean, is there any way with this opportunity? Can you change my life if I don't decide? If I don't commit to making a purchase or joining your team? Can't do it. No, you have to. That's the first step. And, the, and if 80% of the people who could possibly do that won't do it until seven or 10 follow-ups, you guys need to understand that in, with everything that you have to offer, the one thing that you can do that will actually change lives is follow-up. So I want you to stop thinking of following up as something that's annoying and start thinking of it this way. Following up is an act of love. Following up is an act of love. Write it down, put it on a sticky note, put it somewhere where you can see it every day. Following up is an act of love. And not following up communicates this. I don't care enough about you to follow up with you. Sorry. And that's not what you want to communicate, right? So here's the thing, guys. You have to, first of all, you have to understand that you need to follow up eight to 10 times if you love people enough to help them. Now, let me teach you how to do it without being annoying. Are you ready? There's two principles. Now, first off, these, every one of those 10 follow-up scripts in Teamsy are based on these two principles. So if you don't remember these principles, but you use my scripts, it'll work. <laughs> okay. First principle. And, and some of the things I teach you may go against what you've been taught. And that is because old techniques are being taught that people hate. Okay. Here's the first principle. Never ask someone to do anything in a follow-up. Never ask someone to do anything in a follow-up. Don't ask them to call you back. Don't ask them to text you back. Don't ask them to RSVP for your event. Don't ask them to complete their purchase. Don't ask them to do anything in the follow-up. Okay? That's your first, first principle. The second one is this. Your follow-up needs to be in written form. Facebook Messenger's best text to second best. And it needs to be short enough they can read it on the lock screen of their phone without opening the message. Right? Because they're not going to respond and they don't want you to know they've seen it. But you want to make sure they've seen it. Here's the thing, guys. Understand this. The vast majority of people will not respond to a follow-up. The first five or six follow-ups, the vast majority of people will not respond to at all. But you want them to see them. Why? Let me just explain this. Because a lot of times we, we hear the crickets and we create a story on why there's crickets. Oh, she's a flake. Oh, she's broke. I knew it. Oh, her husband's a big jerk. I've heard. He won't let her do it. Oh, she doesn't respect my time. How annoying. Oh, right? These are stories that we create that are not true. Most of the time they're not true. 
here's what's really happening. I'm talking to Jay about the business opportunity. She's so excited, so excited. But you have to understand this, 85% of our actions come from our subconscious mind, 85%. Have you guys ever driven home and then driven into your driveway and thought, how the heck did I get here? I don't remember driving home. That's your subconscious mind. It can actually drive your car. Imagine what else it does. It's designed to keep you safe. It keeps you away from threats. It keeps your life ordered. Now, I'm talking to Jay about this new business opportunity. Oh my gosh, so exciting. And her subconscious is going, mm, I don't think so. That sounds like scary risk. You're, you hate your job, Jay, but it's stable and safe. And that's where we're going to stay. So what happens is she gets next, she goes on, she goes on to our team call. She's super excited. The next day she gets my follow-up message. She sees it and she smiles and she re reconnects for a split second to the hope and excitement she had when she was talking to me. And then her subconscious mind distracts her. Jay, over here, over here. The baby throwing up on the dog, go handle it. And she's like, she puts the phone down. I'll, t I'll talk to Eric later. I gotta go handle this. And it was legitimate. It was a real thing that her subconscious used to pull her away from thinking about this scary thing. Next day, she gets another follow-up from me. Same thing happens. Oh, I need to, uh, I'm in the middle of making dinner right now. I can't. Boom. Every day something comes up and it's her subconscious protecting her from this business opportunity. This happens across the globe. This is why 80% this is why of all sales happen this way, guys. Now, the third day or the third follow-up, she's still not answering and most people give up. Here's what I want you guys to know. You just got to keep it, keep after it, keep doing it. Cause each time she sees it, she, she'll have that good feeling, especially if you follow my principles and her subconscious will feel less and less threatened by your opportunity. This is why around five or six, you'll get a response. That's an apology. People will say, I'm so sorry. I haven't responded. Thank you so much for staying in touch with me. I really appreciate what you're doing. And you're like, really? You appreciate it? I was worried I'd be annoying. No, thank you for staying in touch with me. My life's been crazy. And they'll tell you why. And around the fifth or sixth follow-up is where you restart your conversation with them. You guys understand? This is the process. Now, in Teamsy, it's easy. You just go to your power-up, bam, 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 work your lists, go to your follow-up list, send the next follow-up. It takes seconds. And after a few weeks, you might have a full pipeline of follow-ups, and it'll be in, your power hour will be 30 minutes of connects, 30 minutes of follow-ups, and you're done. And you just keep going. So here's how you finish her off in the system. Then I'll, then you guys can ask me some more questions and we'll get on our way. I look her up again on my look up after I followed up a bunch of times and I look and I see that she joined the team. I go to her record. First thing I'm going to do is log my sale by clicking sale, right? Let's say she got the pro kit. What's the basica? Was it supposed to have an A after that? No. <laughs> That's a typo, right? <laughs> I'm like, I, pre I, remember, I remember your survey. It was basic. Okay, let's say she did the pro kit. This is the uh, Latin American version, the Basica <laughs> kit. Just kidding. All right, so she got her pro kit. Boom, I'm just going to log that. Great. Now I'm going to move her member type from prospect to artist just by clicking on it. And then I'll just put level one. Bam. Cool. Now she's on my team. She'll show up on my artist list instead of my prospects lists next time I connect with her. Pretty cool. That's how you crush a power hour. 30 minutes a day. Get all these activities done. You guys, I have a boot camp right now that's, um, that's just finishing its 10th week. Leaders from um, 27 different networks in that group. So cool. And they've been doing bigger numbers than they would normally do because it's a boot camp. But pretty awesome. The first two months, they, um, I just got the numbers. The first two months, they, they averaged 16 new team members and um, 18 new customers or something like that in the first two months. Pretty awesome. Just working this way, making people's day, you know, enjoying your business, enjoying helping people. So, all right. If you guys have any questions, go ahead and ask away. I know I've been talking a long time. Well, this is just so awesome. I took some awesome notes here. I am so excited about, um, well, why don't you tell us how much um, it costs after the 30 days too? Oh yeah. Great idea. Okay. So here's the thing. I got to give you guys your action steps. I forgot about that part. <laughs> Let's see here. Action steps. See if this thing actually works or not. Okay. So first thing you got to do is get your 30 days from trial. We talked about that at the beginning, but it's free 30 days free. Okay. Um, if you've already got your free trial going, set up your subscription now so you don't miss a beat after your free trial is over, you'll have the option to continue on with us. 
Okay, we don't do it automatically. It's $29.99 a month, all right? So basically all of this that I've showed you is less than a dollar a day for you to keep going in your business. Okay, so if you're serious about building your business. I'm just asking, will, will people be prompted after their 30 day free trial to opt in? Yeah, you'll start getting messages, um, emails, and it'll be on your dashboard about three weeks in. Okay. Okay. So, um, but here's the thing I want you guys to know, even if you miss the deadline and your account shuts off, you can start it back up anytime and all your data will be there waiting for you. You don't lose it. Okay. All right. So that's your first thing. Get your 30 day free trial going. If you're already doing it, get your subscription. If you really are falling in love, you can, you can save some money by going for a full year at a time instead of a month at a time. You save a couple months that way. Okay. The next thing I want you guys to do is get a 30 day success partner to do the free trial with you. This is huge. This is huge because accountability is everything. The truth is, is none of us are good by ourselves. So if you could get somebody to do this with you, here's what I want you to do. Each day when you complete your Teamsy action steps, you take a screenshot of your completed dashboard and message it over to your partner. And I will tell you something, it will be really annoying the days you don't do yours and you get it from your partner. <laughs> but it'll, it, it'll force you to do it because you're gonna be like, ugh. Dang it, I need to just go crank this out and it will help. You'll get so much more out of it. So get a 30-day success partner. And then I'll also give you guys a five-day challenge. The five-day challenge is this. I want you to connect with 100 people in five days. I want you to connect with 100 people in five days. That's an average of 20 a day, just like I demoed today. If you do this, you guys will feel what it feels like to have this kind of momentum in your business. Now, I'll be honest, you may be a little overwhelmed by it at first as you build the skills for managing this many conversations. But you will never be worried about where your business is going to come from because you're going to have so much activity happening all the time. And because it's all based on relationship, it feels so good. It feels so good. So over time, you guys will become the go-to. In your sphere of influence, your people, you will be the go-to on this subject, the expert, the person they're bringing people to. And it's going to be so much fun. So there's your action steps, okay? You guys in? Who's in for the five-day challenge? Me. Awesome. Okay, so there's the, there's the price. It's $29.99 a month. Um, also, you know, if you guys are interested in joining the, I know you guys were brand new to your network, but if you're interested in joining that boot camp, um, you'll start getting emails from me today or tomorrow. I, we're going to start promoting it. And the boot camp's open. We open registration for seven days and then it closes and then it's gone for a quarter. But um, those are a great way to get started because you get to get in there with leaders from different networks. <clears throat> I mean, it's like a TMZ boot camp. Yeah, it's a Teamsy boot camp. Like a and training it's... boot camp. Mm-hmm. And how to use it. Oh it's... yeah, that's good. Yeah, so we so we it's been amazing because people will get to have friends in other networks and learn from their experience. So um, like for example, in this in the boot camp that's ending right now, I've got several people Rodan Fields that are at the very top of their compensation plan, right? They call them RFX Circle. I don't know if you guys know their ranks. Um, we've got a couple of top young living um, oils people, like totally different, you know, but awesome. they have all this experience. And so it's really cool to get them in there and um, kind of teaching them what they're loving is having a, a, this relationship way of building their business and teaching their downline because what they've been taught is, you know, the blasting of the cold invites and all of the stuff that they haven't, you know, that's worked for them and it works, but it hasn't sat right with them as they've gone through. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So it's just a different approach and one that I truly, you know, I've seen over the last um, 15 years of helping people in every business, it actually gets better results yeah. than, than the old school way. It's just, it's still, for some reason, still kind of countercultural with what's being taught out there. Yeah. So. Yeah. I love what you said, Eric, about focusing on relationships. I am like a broken record. I feel like I'm like, we sell makeup. That's what we sell. But this is not the makeup business. You guys got to get this. And like I heard last, we did a big, huge live event last night. And somebody was like, oh, I think I got added to that. And I was like, oh, no, did you not get invited first and then accept that invitation first? And like, oh, no, someone's doing it backwards, just cold adding, you know. And so I think everything that you've said really um, – is really resonating with my heart as, as you know, just a network marketer in general. And what I try and sort of preach to our team 
of starting with the relationship first, nurturing your relationships first. We are not in the makeup business. We're in the relationship business, period, the end. And yeah. from what you've shown me here, it feels like this is going to be a really neat way to nurture and stay on top of all the connections and the conversations that we really need to be having as professionals in this industry. Yes. And that's it. I mean, you hit it. It's relationship marketing isn't selling things to your relationships. Right, right. It's building a business of relationships. It's the coolest business ever, you know? right? Yeah, absolutely. So hopefully that's helpful for you guys. I'm going to, I, we record I'm this. Guys, I'm excited. I'm pumped. Sorry. I wish I had more to add, but I don't know if you guys can see what's going on back here. So I, I love it. I probably need it more than anyone. And yeah, it's great. <laughs> awesome. I thought your voice was really deep for a second there. I was like, wow. <laughs> that was my husband. He's yeah, I, I figured. <laughs> like crazy. So whatever. Hi, I'm a supportive husband and I, uh, and I was listening in the background. Uh, yeah. We do marketing things all day long like this. That's yeah. awesome. Well, love it. All right, guys. So, um, I'll, I'll give you this recording so you guys can have it so you can share with the team. Thank and you. We'll get it rendered. But I'm excited. I'm excited for you guys. I'm excited. I'm excited for your network to be part of the Teamsy family. You guys are going to absolutely love it. Um, and, uh, you know, if you have any questions or you need anything, feel free to message me. Um, also, oh, I want to show you a couple things as you guys are getting started. Okay. If anyone gets this far, but you guys can know to tell your team. When you're in Teamsy, there's a thing over here called Help Center on the left side where you can go and you can get videos and FAQs and stuff that can help you with tons of different things. Okay. Also down here on the bottom right is the help button. So if you send a message to our team, they'll jump all over it and help you. We'll even for like people that are super tech averse, we'll do a one-on-one -on -one Zoom and walk somebody through it. Wow. That's really okay. nice. Well, and I um, joined the Teamsy community on Facebook and I had a question and I just typed it in the search bar and it came right up. So I feel like you guys just make everything very user-friendly, very, you know, it's just very straightforward. And so I love it. Thank you. That's the other thing I was going to mention is the Teamsy community. So you click that right here to join that where it says community. Also, there it is, Teamsy community. Also the university. So in the university, you know, I told you that we're trainers. My partner, Mike, and I, um, when we, we worked together for years coaching people. So we've put some trainings in here that are included um, in your, even in your free trial, you can get these trainings, things on how to set your goals, um, like serious courses on how to set goals. Cool. Um, and then we've got a lot of other trainings that are, you know, a la carte. You can buy training packages where we can go deeper on different things on how to build your business, um, including the boot camp, which we were talking about, um, which is coming up here. So take a look at those, but definitely, you know, get these free trainings going and you can take those trainings and turn them around and train your team, help them write their goals, you know, help them uncover their why. Do we just go a little deeper on those trainings? Um, so I want you guys to take advantage of those. We put those there to help you guys be successful. Cool. Well, I can't wait to get started. I'm definitely going to try this out and hopefully become a power hour boss as I implement everything that I learned today. Thank you, Brittany, for setting this up. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, so absolutely. Amazing. And yeah, thanks so much, Eric, for your time and doing this yeah. for us. My pleasure. Yeah. So again, I'll send you that. I'll send you that recording. You can share away. Okay. okay. Have an awesome day, you guys. God bless. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Let's kill it. Let's kill it. <laughs> Woo!